Ladies and gentlemen, we have with us Professor Kazimierz Brown, who is a scholar, writer, and director, and a professor emeritus of the University of Buffalo, New York, and also Polish theater in the time of war, 1930 and 1945, fight, losses, and will to survive. Professor Brown. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I should speak about Polish theater in the time of war. Due to limited time, I shall present to you an abridged version of my presentation, my paper. I submit the, the full text to the organizing committee. <laughs> Let me tell you first a story, a true story of an actor soldier. On September 1st, 1939, in the morning, an actress, Jadwiga Domańska, went to her theater in Katowice for the last dress rehearsal of uh, Xantippus' defense by Morstein, in which she performed the lead. Yet, from 5 a.m., bomb explosions were heard from the Muchowiec airport, and frantic voice voices on the radio informed that German armed forces were attacking Silesia from the south and the west. The rehearsal went on, but the opening schedule for the next day was called off because on September 2nd, due to overwhelming pressure by the enemy, the Polish Kraków army decided not to take a stand in Silesia, but to withdraw north. Thousands of civilians also decided to move towards central Poland. Domańska was one of them. She arrived to Warsaw. In November 1939, she joined the underground Union of Armed Struggle, Związek Walki Zbrojnej, took the oath and became a soldier. Her duties included dispatch travels between German-occupied Warsaw and Soviet-occupied Vilno. In March 1940, Domańska was arrested by the Soviets while crossing the border between the German and the Soviet zones. She was sentenced to eight years and sent to, to Camp Gulag near Novosibirsk. In October 1941, thanks to the Sikorsky, uh, Sikorsky Stalin Treaty, she was sent. Uh, she was released and immediately joined the Polish troops organized on the, Soviet Union, uh, uh, on the Soviet soil under the auspices of the London-based Polish government in exile. In the spring of 1943, uh, the commander of the Second, uh, Second Corps, General Władysław Anders, appointed Domańska the manager of the newly created Dramatic Theater of the Second Corps, as it was called. She organized fully professional theater company, counting about 50 actors plus sizable technical staff, all former Soviet prisoners, including the great director, Václav Radulski. After appropriate training, training Domańska earned the rank of the lef lieutenant. Her theater performed for Polish troops and for civilians in the Soviet Union, Iraq, Palestine, and Italy, ending its odyssey in London after the war. In Domańska's story, we have in capsule both a typical and symbolic journey 
of a Polish theater artist during World War II. Theater, underground military service, imprisoned in imprisonment in, in, the, in Gulag, overt military service, theater again. Here, I should say, uh, say that uh, besides the dramatic theater of the Second Corps, um, several smaller acting companies were active within Polish army. In the West, also, soldiers' theater was created that the Polish troops organized by the Soviet Union. Additionally, several Polish civilian acting companies performed for their compatriots scattered by the war all over the world. Such companies were active in Romania, France, Great Britain, Canada, the United States, and Brazil. Why did, did Domańska, an actress, join the underground military in the country and later rushed from the Gulag to the Polish armed forces? First, she called upon her family patriotic tradition and it was her case and it was quite common. Her three older brothers, Kazimierz, Jerzy, and Julius were volunteer soldiers fighting the Bolsheviks in the war of 1920. The oldest, Kazimierz, earlier was a soldier in the Piłsudski legions and later one of the Polish aviators, as they were called. He was killed in 1920. Second, Domańska cherished the old Polish tradition the theater being a stronghold of national values and language. During the time of partitions, when Poland was not, uh, did not exist politically, uh, ruled by Russia, Austria, and Prussia, later Germany, the nation was subjugated to the aggressive Russification and uh, Germanization, which included imposition of Russian or German as the official language in the areas of, in all areas of public life. Only in two institutions was the Polish language still publicly used and heard, the Roman Catholic Church and the theater. The church used Latin in litur liturgies and sac sacraments, but readings, homilies, and songs were, uh, resounded in Polish. Theaters in all three partitions performed in Polish. In this way, theater became a repository of the national spirit and symbol of resistance. Historians had differed in explanation why Polish theater was not banned by in the churches and theaters. Were the partitioners afraid of encroaching on these two precious and popular sanctuaries, or did they fail to appreciate their importance? In any case, the fact remains, in the collective memory of the nation, theater in Poland acquired special dignity and took respons responsibilities over and above purely artistic or entertaining ones. The, nation, the notion of service, service to the nation, became inseparably linked with creating theater. For the Mańska and score of her colleagues, military service was logical and obvious continuation of their theater service. We speak at this conference about Poland first to fight. So I should speak about those theater people who actually fought with a weapon in hand, who served in the Polish armed forces, if they were actors or directors as well as theater technicians uh, or craftsmen, they were typically in the reserve before the war and were mobilized at the end of August 1939. When the war broke out, they took part in the fighting. 
Several of them fought with a weapon, weapon hand, uh, in hand as officers and soldiers. In 1939 campaign, later as combatants of the Home Army, Armia Krajowa, also within Polish armed forces fighting abroad. As an example of a typical biography, only one example among many possible, an actor soldiers, soldier during Second World War II. We can consider Captain Aleksander Zapczyński. He was trained as art artillery officer, but chose acting career and transferred to the reserve. In 1930s, he became one of the brightest stars of Warsaw stages and beloved screens, uh, silver screen hero. Mobilized in 1930, he fought the Germans, never surrendered, went with his unit to Romania, where he was interned. He escaped and joined the Polish forces in France. He fought in German-French war of 1940. He was evacuated to England. From there, he was transferred to General Anders Second Corps and fought at the Battle of Monte Cassino, where he was wounded. Actors who fought in 39 campaign and remained in the country had different biographies. Several of them became soldiers of the Home Army and fought the enemy weapon in hand. Here, the most notable example was Major Roman Niewiarowicz, a well-known playwright, actor, and director. He returned from the battlefields to Warsaw, joined the underground Polish military, and became head of an intelligence cell of the Home Army, taking part also in armed actions. Arrested by Gestapo in 1943, he was imprisoned, tortured, and sent to concentration camp in Gross Rosen. Some theater artists, many of them, joined the armed resistance in the country as members of the Home Army. But the majority of theater milieu fought with their most fitting weapon, the word. For a theater artist, this was the weapon of choice. In October 1939, German authorities ordered all theater artists in general government to register and apply for the permits to perform on stages which German authorities wanted to organize. It was an attempt to make an illusion of the normalization in the occupied country. In response to this order, the Polish Actors' Union, functioning at that time underground, ordered its members not to register and not to perform on German sponsored stages, and thus to boycott them. This decision was confirmed by the clandestine theater council. Consequently, the majority of theater artists choose not to register and therefore resign from practicing their professions. As a result of the boycott scores of actors, singers, dancers, directors, choreographers, conductors, des designers, musicians became jobless. In order to somehow support themselves, they work as waiters, janitors, streetcar controllers, manual laborers, young Karol Wojtyła, later Pope. Pope John Paul II, an inspiring actor of an underground theater, worked for two years in the stone mine near Krakow. The boycott referred specifically to the German-sponsored theater, but more generally because of the participation of so many famous celebrities, as we would say today, it 
emboldened thousands. While practically going underground, the theater milieu moved towards creating clandestine productions, illegal from the point of view of the occupiers, and therefore threatened by arrest, deportation to a concentration camp, or death. Historians of theater call about 200 secret theater cells between 1939 and 45, functioning all over Poland within its pre-war borders. Additionally, because all schools of drama were closed, the theater instruction was carried on underground in small studies. Two major centers of theater, of this uh, underground theater activity, were Warsaw and Kraków. Kraków with the Rhapsodic Theater, Teatr Rhapsodiczny by Kotlarczyk, and the independent theater created by Tadeusz Kantor. Productions were also prepared in German offlags, stalags, and concentration camps. The great actor, Juli uh, Stefan Jarac, performed for follow, fellow inmates in Auschwitz, Zofia Ryszówna in Ravensbrück, Roman Niewiarowicz in Grossrosen and Dachau. Such productions were recorded also in Soviet camps, Gulag system. The most unusual phenomenon was the Yarach Theater, Teatr Yaracza, as fellow inmates call it in Auschwitz. The great actor Stefan Yarach was arrested in Warsaw on March 41 and sent to Auschwitz. As we know, the camp population was almost exclusively Polish at that time. Yarach was incarcerated in Auschwitz on April 6, 41, along with a group of theater artists. Zbigniew Savan, great movie star, Leon Schiller, great director, Bohdan Korzeniewski, prominent theater critic. Yarach got his prisoner number tattooed on his forearm, 13580. We could have it on the screen, but I did not prepare the images. No, 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 no. 13580, this was Yarach's number. Assigned to the camp's kitchen to peel potatoes, he recited Polish romantic poetry to the fellow inmates, which was punishable uh, by the death penalty. In the Soviet occupied, later Soviet annexed Polish territories, theaters were permitted to reopen Wilno, Lwów, Białystok, Grodno, Łódzk, but put under strict censorship and political control. Polish classics were prohibited. Polish management was soon replaced by Soviet executives. Polish companies were evicted from their venues and given temporary inadequate uh, accommodations. In spite of the restrictions and difficulties, Polish theaters were still functioning. The show were, shows were given in Polish. In this way, theaters remained the last public sanctuaries of Polish identity on these lands. After the Germans invi invited their ally, uh, Soviet Union, in June 41, uh, Polish theater were simply shut down. Since then, only underground productions, and there are records of such productions, uh, prepared, were prepared from time to time on these Polish theater territories. A short list of Polish theaters, theater losses. Material losses. The National Theater in Warsaw was bombed by Luftwaffe on September 19th, 1939. Eventually, 
Poland lost about 70% of theater buildings standing in 1939, plus the libraries, sets and costumes, magazines, and so on. In terms of human losses, about 300 theater professionals died during the war. First, those who perished in the country. Here we can list those who were killed in military actions as soldiers, like actor Ludwig Berger, killed on a street of Warsaw in a skirmish with Gestapo. Young playwright Tadeusz Gajcy, killed during Warsaw Uprising, 1944. Additionally, several of older theater artists died because of war conditions, like Stanislava Wysocka, great actress, director, pedagogue. Second, those who perished in the East, great actor, Alexander Wengierko, Eugeniusz Bodo, film star, director, producer, murdered in the Soviet camp in Kotlas, near Arkhangelsk, in 1943. Third, those who perished in the West, in German concentration camps or prisons, actor, Mieczysław Wengen, murdered in Auschwitz, 42. Actress, Jadwiga Litwinishnova, murdered in Rabersbrück, 43. Actress, Nina Veit, an intelligence uh, home army officer, caught by the Gestapo, was beheaded with an ax in a prison in Berlin, 43. The losses in spiritual domain were uncountable, of course. The theater artists were deprived the possibility of, to perform, executing their professions and vocation. Theater spectators were left without their artistic nourishment. And finally, the legacy. First, the general attitude of the theater milieu, the same as the whole nation, that of defiance and opposition towards both the German and the Soviet occupiers was mirrored by the opposition stand of the stance of the majority, not all, but the majority of the nation towards the communist regime after the war. Of course, as in the time of the war, there were those who collaborated with the regime. Second, bold experiments originated in, in the times of war, brought fruits after the war. As an example, the famous Krikotu theater by Cantor, one of the best theaters in the world, known well also in, uh, in the United States because of his many visits here. Third, the boycott of German-sponsored shows declared by theater people during the war echoed in 1982 when, in response to the introduction of martial law by the Jaruzelski's junta, the theater milieu decided to boycott the official media, television, press, and also film productions. This boycott and the oppositional, activi oppositional activities of many theater people were one small let significant, yet significant step towards eventual overthrowing communism in Poland. Thus, wartime fightings, struggles, sacrifices, losses, 
and works of Polish theater people were not only an important element of the war effort of the nation, but contributed to the restoration of Poland's freedom at the end of the 20th century. Thank you very much. Thank you.